Hi everyone, it's Archie Enriquez Diz and I will be sharing with you information about how I was able to bring my pet cat, Luke, to the Philippines from the U.S. during the quarantine and the uh, pandemic. So this is just uh, basically bullet points but uh, I also will link some articles down below for a more for a more thorough uh, information about the whole process about tips from uh, the actual um, airline as well information about uh, how to bring your pet from the actual airline in my case I use the Philippine uh, Philippine Airlines uh, to fly and uh, bring look with me so uh, for sure uh, if you do not have to bring your pet cat please you don't please um, don't <laughs> because uh, as you probably already know cats are very are huge homebodies and they don't like uh, a sudden change of environment especially from one country to another such drastic change um, in my case I had no choice but to bring him along so um, you know in that case then I did but if I have a choice let's say someone will be able to foster him uh, in the meantime or someone can take care of take care of him fully then I would rather for his best interest uh, leave him behind um, but if you are also um, under the same predicament and you have to bring your pet cat then you do have some pap you do have some paperwork to fill out and to submit so uh, one of them was well, you need to have the you know vaccinations and all that already done. You have the rabies um, vaccination um, and also the um, you know like uh, make sure to make sure your pet has no parasite. But when you visit your vet, your vet will uh, should know uh, the proper um, you know vaccinations to. To be done um, but you can also do some research just to back it up uh, there's the you know vaccination against leukemia vaccination against um, or cat leukemia feline leukemia there's vaccination against um, rabies and parasites and all that and you need to have some uh, a health certificate from the vet now the health certificate needs to be uh, within 30 days um, of you know, prior to your departure. And uh, once you get a health certificate from the vet, uh, the vet can then submit that to the USDA um, so that the, you know, the USDA can issue an export permit um, saying that your cat is safe enough to fly and um, Oh, by the way, you also need to get your cat microchip as well if you haven't yet. And once you have that health certificate and have them directly send it online electronically to the USDA, there there are of course uh, fees that include with these services. Then once you get those documentations, then you also will need to submit uh, the to go to the link below to um, to have an uh, import permit from the Department of Agriculture from the Philippines. So, Philippine Department of Agriculture needs uh, ha will uh, there's a, a web link. It's called intercommerce.com. So it's a it's not a like a government website, but they it's a third party that they use. Uh, for you to uh, to submit those documents and it will those documents will be listed um, and if you have questions uh, you can email them I did the first time I filled it out uh, I filled them, uh, it out incompletely and I was kind of confused with the interface of the website so I wasn't sure if I got it. so with the website it doesn't have the uh, I got kind of confused with the interface so I thought I did it correctly but uh, in my case I was wondering this about the status of my application so I emailed them and they sent a prompt response so as it turns out you can just email them if you have questions of whether you got it correctly or not and then well, if you will need to create a username and password 
uh, to come back to so you can check the status of your application. Um, you need to submit, you know, the photo of your cat, a certificate of uh, having the microchip, you know, the health certificate. Oh, you also need to fill out an affidavit form saying that your cat is healthy and what you're going to travel with your cat. So um, you just need to upload those documents and then uh, you hit submit. And then I think it will take about two to three days and you can check back and it will say either incomplete, decline or approved. So once again, if it's incomplete or if you have other questions, if you have questions, you can email them. Uh, in my case, I got an incomplete status because I didn't do it correctly. Then I, uh, after I did it correctly, I got a response saying it's approved. So I just printed it out. Um, so I, I now I have an import permit as well. I think that's really important that you show that the Philippine uh, government approves uh, bringing your cat with you. Um, and then you can print that out along with his you know um, or her um, uh, paperwork uh, in the other documents including a uh, photo and put it in like a um, plastic sleeve or ziplock or something like that where you can take uh, the documents onto uh, the kennel no the kennel needs to be an airline approved carrier um, Amazon and Chewy those kind of um, websites will have those so there's like a, a standard IATA um, approved uh, carrier I got one that was um, kind of spacious not too big but uh, medium size for my cat because I wanted to make sure that my cat look can uh, stretch and all that because the flight is at least 14 hours and I was just really worried that Luke may not be able to stretch or you know um, will be stuck in one position so it's a little roomy but not too big to the point where he won't feel it's cozy so it's medium size um, I put some um, blankets inside and uh, my old t-shirt so you'll have my scent and it will she or he will feel like he's not alone at least you know um, there's that uh, I put a little bit of water and a little bit of food only I don't want a lot because I don't want him feeling uncomfortable having to go to the bathroom um, he's a very clean neat freak cat and I just want to make sure that he won't have that anxiety speaking of anxiety I also got anti-anxiety meds uh, from my vet um, you do not you don't want to use sedation especially because the Philippine Airlines they can only um, only dogs can fly with you um, in, uh, in, the, in in the with your in your actual seat uh, when cat because they're you know um, they can be um, emotional support pets but cats they have to go uh, in the cargo area and uh, so it's it can be very nerve wracking for both me and and Luke to for him to be completely away and uh, for him to be in the cargo area and uh, for you know at least 14 hours straight so I I, and and a, a sedation can lead to death uh, for and it has happened in the past uh, based on my research so it's best to uh, get anti-anxiety medicine instead uh, but the anti-anxiety medicine um, can only last up to eight hours so it's not enough to cover for the whole trip but at least it's there uh, better than nothing I could, gave it to him right before the, uh, we drove to the airport um, and let's see what else um, and yeah you do want to just in case the cat will end up like you know going to the bathroom you want to put like layers of blanket there inside um, to absorb let's say if it's, if it's pee or poo and you can just throw away that blanket after now as far as um, 
the actual material. So yeah, you can buy an airline approved carrier, but also you need to have like metal bolts, metallic bolts instead of the plastic ones. You need to get zip ties to secure the lock door. Um, and uh, you those stickers that says live animals. There's a travel kit that you can also get from Amazon or from Chewy.com. Uh, and let's see what else. And after that, uh, I brought the day of our flight, we brought Luke um, and gave him the anti-anxiety meds and they weigh him and he, they looked over the paperwork and uh, it was we were charged for his flight based on weight as if he's a uh, you know a luggage so um, that's gonna go to the uh, the cargo area so it was around three hundred fifty dollars because the carrier was rather like you know um, medium size bigger than than like the the small you know cat size. Um, so 350 bucks, but we were it's more for our own peace of mind at least he's, he's a little, relatively more comfortable than super cooped up uh, and then after that they took him to, so so yeah and then you fill out a form as well like uh, you know when will be the next time that he will need to be fed just in case you know um, it will be a while until we see Luke but thankfully right after our flight um, we got to uh, claim him after our uh, declaration of customs like also like um, you know going through the quarantine protocols of reporting where our quarantine hotel or swab tests scheduling and all that um, after that we were able to pick, uh, pick him up uh, and he was not happy but he wasn't super rattled either and now it all depends on the cat of course um they you know the cats can be very different from each other and they have their own personalities but with luke uh, based on his experience and mine uh, he was doing fine but he was i can tell a little stressed out he was not happy, he was meowing a lot, uh, especially after he saw me because he wants to get out of the carrier. Um, so good thing that our quarantine hotel is near the airport, so we were able to um, you know, get him out of the airport right away and to our quarantine hotel. And then um, we, because it's quarantine anyway, we cannot step out of the hotel. At least we were there with him 24 hours a day to make sure that he's okay so he was very rattled as soon as he came out of the carrier and saw a completely different environment um, different you know climate and all that so he went under the bed and but, we, but because we kept on comforting him he after a couple of days started playing and he started lounging up until now it's um, I think our fourth day now of quarantine and he's still having some minor anxiety like especially because back home I would give him walks in our backyard so he cannot do that anymore so he's a little frustrated that he cannot get out of the hotel but aside from that with the traveling it seems like it's possible um, it's not advisable if you can if you don't have to bring your cat don't because it's gonna be a hassle for you and a hassle for him or her, your her uh, but um, it's not going to be uh, this you know terrifying uh, trauma that your cat will have um, especially if you train your cat ahead of time and make your cat comfortable inside the carrier so maybe um, a month prior the prior to your flight you can get your cat used to the carrier um, put treats inside uh, what I would do is I would even um, you know take him for a ride um, just for him to get used to traveling he's he didn't like it but at least I think he won't be too shocked if I just if I didn't train him for during those trips 
So um, in the beginning, I would just put him in the car and drive around a neighborhood and came back. Then gradually add more travel time um, to the point where we brought him to our long trip to LA from, from San Francisco Bay Area. So that was seven hours, six, seven hours. He was not happy. It was tough love for us because at least he can have a feel of, um, you know, uh, of long travel time confined in the carrier, but at least it's seven hours, not 14, and at least he had us with him, next to him. So that was the, and then after that, you know, we would give him treats and then we would once again bring him along for the ride and come back. So by the time the, um, the, the actual plane uh, flight arrives, uh, the date, the travel date, he won't be too shocked that, okay, he will have an idea of how it would feel, um, but I won't be expecting that it will be something that's enjoyable for him. Um, so it's, I, I was just hoping that it can mitigate that anxiety and lessen, um, lessen the stress for him. So. Um, and it's, I think it has worked because he's, like I said, he's back now. It's a, he's still a little anxious, but um, but not to the point where he wasn't eating or wasn't playing. So uh, it's a good sign that he's playing and eating and um, roaming around. Uh, but he's not a fan of the hot weather yet. So I think uh, that's pretty much it. And if I have list out other details uh i will just leave the information below from uh, the links that i have uh, used to do my research and and have helped me uh, get a better idea of how to handle the situation especially because this is my this was my first time having a cat and this is my first time bringing a cat to another country so i was i did get a lot of well, not a lot. I did get a few questions from people about how I was able to bring my cat. So I hope that now I have shared them with you, then you have um, you have better information now to, to go with. And if you have more questions, feel free to leave under the comments. Or if you have uh, tips uh, that you want to share how you were able to handle bringing your pet to your destination, uh, feel free to share them. Thanks again. My name is RG and I wish you and your cat well and um, I yeah, and I hope that you guys take care and stay safe.